Are you prepared for the unexpected? You know, wildfires, hurricanes, earthquakes can strike at any minute, as well as house fires, gas leaks, chem spills. I mean, there's a lot of instances where you have to quickly evacuate your home. And it's crucial to do it quickly, safely, and take your important documents with you. That's where a grab and go binder comes in. This binder is not only useful in emergencies, it is for everyday emergencies too. It's really helpful and it's a lifesaver. You keep all your important documents in one place, labeled and organized, so you can quickly access them whenever you might need them. You know, unlike many of my preps, such as my EDC, my vehicle kit, or my get home bag, that I rarely or have never ever used. I use this all the time. For instance, my husband's selling his Harley motorcycle. Where's the title? Yep, you guessed it, right in here. One of the kids taking a driver's license test. They need their birth certificate to get their license. Again, right in here. Or how about we have to take the dog to the kennel? and they need their vaccination record. Got it. Or our trash wasn't picked up. What number should I call? In here also. Well, I think you're getting the idea. This organizer is handy all year round, not just in a disaster. Let's first discuss what you put in the binder and then some of the supplies you might want to organize and then what are any of the negatives of having a grab-and-go binder? Now these are the dividers that I have in my grab-and-go binder. You may want to tailor it to what you need. But what I have is contacts, important documents, financial, medical, insurance, home, auto, estate, miscellaneous, and evacuation. Now we're going to discuss what documents you keep in each of those divisions but I want to encourage you to download this PDF sheet. It's right in the links below this video and in the pinned comment. And it's a checklist of all the documents you may want to consider keeping in your grab and go binder. Let's look at that first section, contacts. Well, emergency contact numbers are ones I keep like for the sheriff department, for gas leak number, power outage, and family members' contact information. I keep it all on one page at the front of this binder. Then you might want family ID sheets, something like this. You put a picture of the family member, identifying information such as birthmarks or tattoos, and you can even keep a DNA sample by including a sample of hair. Now, I encourage you to make one of these ID sheets for each member of your family, and you may also want to include fingerprints, that's up to you, but have at least two sheets of each ID because one you can keep, and if something would happen where you have to put up on a search board, then you have one to put up on the board, but one to keep. Cell phone contact printout. Yep, once a year I print out all the contacts for my cell phone because you know what? That's about everybody that I could ever think of that I might need to get a hold of. And I have it now right in this binder in case something would happen and I lose my cell contacts. Repair and maintenance contacts. Well, here I keep the contact information for vendors we might use for snow plowing, plumbing, electrical. You get the idea. The next section is important documents. And you might wonder, why am I keeping original documents in here? Well, the reason is, in some cases, the government or agencies will not accept a copy. But it is up to you if you want to put a copy in your binder and keep the original somewhere else. So we're looking at passports. And as you can see here, I used the four pocket sheet protector to keep our passports nice and organized. Uh, I do that for the birth certificates and for social security cards and some other things. You could use a pencil pouch for this in your binder, but this way I can clearly see, oops, missing a passport. And in this case I was when I went through my thing. 
where's my husband's passport? Well, he forgot to put it back in here when we got back from our cruise. So this way I could easily see it. If they were all in one pencil pouch, I might not be able to see as easily what is missing. So you're gonna want passports, birth certificates, driver's license, military records, social security cards, religious certificates, diplomas, school transcripts, marriage certificates, divorce records, prenups and postnups, child custody agreements, adoption papers, immigration papers, CCW or CPL permit, firearm serial numbers, which I'm in the process of doing. That really is a good idea, just in case something would happen to your firearms. And any resumes. Now, for financial, I do keep a pencil pouch, and I keep large and small bills in it. The large bills would be if we had to go somewhere, maybe stay at a hotel and the credit card system wasn't working, they would accept the cash. And the smaller bills are, because of a place that's a digital cash register, it's not working, they can't give you change. So keep dollar bills, $5 bills, $10 bills, and $20 bill, dollar bills also. Really a good idea in your emergency cash fund in your grab and go binder. And you're gonna want bank statements, I try to keep the final one for the year in my sheet protector and then at the end of next year replace it with that current statement. And for credit cards, you want to copy them front and back and any contact numbers, really a good idea. Any investment, 401k information, loan info, contracts, maybe bank deposit box info. And you might want to keep income tax info. If you did, you might want it in a pouch like this, but it may be too much to keep in your binder. So you might want only summary sheets in this. Medical. Well, here's my envelope with my three month supply of prescription med. What I did was save a med or a couple of them every time I'm filling a prescription until I had a supply. And now I rotate among that supply. But if I had a grab and go, I have my thyroid medicine with me. And you want copies of your health insurance cards, dental, immunization records, blood type, name, address, phone numbers of all your physicians, medical histories of each family member, list of prescription, name, medication, dosage, pharmacy, and prescription for eyeglasses. But I really suggest that you download another free form I have down below that was made in Excel and you can easily expand it however you need it so you have a health summary for each member of your household. On the front page, you have your contact information, physician information for primary care, any specialists you have, their name and phone numbers, any allergies you might have, what pharmacy you use, the prescriptions you're taking, the dosage and reason, vitamins and supplements, dosage and reason, diagnoses you have, any surgeries dates and what they were for, your vaccination record, your blood pressure info, your dentist, and any dental procedures you might have. And on the back side of this form, you can keep any tests you have, the date and findings, like maybe you had an MRI on a certain date and what did they find? Well, hopefully negative, nothing. But you would keep a list of that. And then you can keep a list here. I have the normal levels for these labs. And then you can put in with dates in each column, your lab results to see if anything is varying. And then I suggest a copy of insurance card. But then you have everything you need on one piece of paper, front and back. I mean, it really is a great thing to have, to include in your binder, especially if all of a sudden you'd have to go to the ER. You have a nice sheet to take with you. Next up is insurance. And here you would put your life insurance, your disability insurance policies, anything of that nature. Now for home, we're gonna include our title, our title or insurance policy, homeowners or rental insurance, personal umbrella insurance, home assessed value, property tax statements. What I do is keep the summer and winter for the year, and then when the next year starts, throw away the old one and put in the new one. So I always have it current. Home mortgage information, any appraisal information. And I keep copies of my various utility statements because that way I have all the information on it. You know, it has the account number, it has the contact number, and 
it's easy to see. And what I do is at year end, I put in the new one and throw away the old one. And it works really well for me. But you might just want to make a list of all your utilities, your account numbers, and your contacts. It is completely up to you. But one thing I really, really, really urge you to do is have a pictorial home inventory. Now I have a video on that if you want to check it out. Uh, it takes time, just the way this takes a little time. But again, you know, I had a fire some years ago and having a home inventory <laughs> would have been so, so nice instead of trying to remember right here, right? So this is where you put it too, in your home section. Just a great, great idea. Now for auto, you want your auto and recreational vehicle insurance policies, registration cards, proof of insurance cards, copies of course, and vehicle titles. Next up, estate plan. And if you don't have an estate plan, get one. At least, at bare minimum, have a medical advance directive. So your loved ones know what you want in case of emergency health care. Very, very important. You can download the form from a lot of different places, completely free. Just do it and then keep a copy in your grab and go binder and give it to any relative that might be involved in your health care. And give it to your primary care physician and the hospital you usually frequent. So you want will, trust and amendments, contact info for everyone named in those will and trusts, living will, advance directives, we just talked about that, power of attorney, home ladybird document, bank account beneficiaries, 401k beneficiary documents, and deed burial plots. Now miscellaneous is just what it sounds. You can put in there whatever you want. In my case, it's just about holy pets, okay? So I have this ID form made out for each of our pets, and I can't show you the whole thing, but you get the idea. I have the picture of the pet, and I have identifying information, and their vet and contact number that type of thing, and have at least two of those again. So in case you have to do a search for a missing pet, you can keep one copy and put one copy on a board. And then you also wanna have your immunization records for your pets and livestock, vet records, pet license, proof of spay, neuter for dogs and their cats, livestock registration papers and health certificates. And there's one more thing you might wanna include under the miscellaneous, but again, that's a risk. Do you want to keep your passwords? You know, when you were making copies of those credit cards, you could have kept your PIN number there too. Again, up to you if you feel that is too risky. But I do want to tell you that you should have your passwords and your PIN numbers someplace where a loved one could access them in case of emergency. To give you an example, my best friend's brother died unexpectedly. He was single. They couldn't figure out how to get into his computer. They couldn't feel where he keeps his records. You know, who does he even use for his bank? Um, everything was online and they were basically locked out and it took a lot of work to get the information they needed. So you may wish to include your passwords. You may not, completely up to you. Again, remember to download this checklist. It will really help you in completing your grab-and-go binder. Now, let's discuss organization and supplies. You can do this however you want. You know, I'm pretty anal, so I like to have everything really well organized. And everything has to have a label on it. But that might not be the way you are. Whatever you're good with, that's fine. But I'm going to give you some suggestions how to organize your binder. Now, one of the things is the binder itself. This is the binder I use. I have had this, oh my heavens, for probably 15 years or more. But I really like that it has the handle. I do suggest that you have a three inch binder because you're gonna find out you put a lot of information in here and it takes up room. And I should mention, you could probably also pick up a binder at Goodwill or a similar store. Again, you can do this process for pennies or spend $50 or more. 
up to you. The next thing you might want to consider is dividers. Uh, I just suggest whatever dividers you get, make sure they are wide enough so the tab sticks out so it's easy for you to find things. And then let's discuss sheet protectors. I think they're a great idea because there's a lot of valuable information in here and I won't want to accidentally spill coffee while I'm working on it and ruin a document. So I have everything in sheet protectors and there's different sheet protectors that I use. So these eight and a half by 11 inch sheet protectors are 50 for $6 on Amazon. I also like to use these heavy duty sheet protectors for insurance policies or something with bulk. A pack of 25 costs $9 on Amazon. If you prefer to use these plastic envelopes for bulky items, a pack of 10 are $7 on Amazon. I love those four pocket sheet protectors, but you don't have to use them. But I do love the organization and the ease to see if something's missing. And a pack of 20 of those is $6 on Amazon. Now something completely, completely optional is a label maker. But you know, this organization here, I have to have a label maker and everything is labeled, including the binder itself, right? So if you are interested in a label maker, I use the Brother Variety and here's one on Amazon. Now, if you're worried about something damaging your binder, water, fire, you might want to place it in a fireproof safe. Although I always wonder how easy that is to access if you're going to quickly evacuate. But again, up to you. Now, this is a continual work in process. You're never done. You buy a new vehicle, you've got to put it in here. Maybe you sell your couch, get a new couch. You want to update your home inventory. End of the year, you're going to replace your bank statements and utility statements. I mean, you get the idea. You're never done with this. So be disciplined and keep it current. There are a few negatives with a grab and go binder because everything important is in one place. So what happens if you're not home and a tornado hits? You might lose everything. Or what happens if somebody steals it? Yeah, all your secret financial information might be available on the dark web. I mean, things can happen. To me, the benefit is well, well worth the risk. But you have to decide if it is for you. I think one of the keys is storing it in a safe place where you can easily access it if you have to evacuate it. I have it a place I can grab and go, but it isn't necessarily noticeable and only a few family members know where I store it. So to me, it's safe enough. So there you have it, grab and go binder. To me, it is a lifesaver in an emergency or just every day. I hope I have inspired you to work on your own grab and go binder. And I'm asking for comments here. Do you have a grab and go binder? If not, why not? Comment below. Be sure to watch this next video on how you can do a pictorial home inventory.